Hello, welcome again to the Sanger House here in Taunton. Pleasure to be back with you. Um, my subject is the Enneagram. And uh, the Enneagram is this amazing device here which tells us so much about ourselves. It is, at its basic level, a personality type indicator. And you'll see round the edge of the circle nine numbers, uh, one, one through to nine. And these are all the types, the personality types that the Enneagram shows up. So, for instance, type one is the reformer. Type two that we want to look at in a little bit more detail today is the helper. Type three, the achiever. Type four, known as the romantic. Type five, the observer. Type six, the loyal skeptic. Type seven, known as the adventurer. Type eight, the asserter. And type nine, the peacemaker. You'll see that they're all arranged around a circle. The circle is all encompassing. It tells us that we're all in there. The Enneagram would also explain to us that um, every single type is needed and necessary for our world. We need each other. We're a world that kind of, we, f we feed off each other, we encourage and support each other. And so no type is better than another. Every single type is needed. And um, just a quick reminder as well that the Enneagram um, has, it recognizes three kind of centers. So types eight, nine, and one at the very top of the Enneagram, um, they, would, they would be known as body types, sometimes called, um, less romantically, gut types, because the energy of those types comes from the gut, it comes from the stomach. It's a kind of more visceral, busy kind of energy. The two, three, and four are known as heart types. Um, the, the energy comes from the heart center. It's heart energy. So the energy is towards connecting, connecting with others, feeling, finding out uh, about the other, connecting with the other. And five, six, and seven are the head types, the thinkers. Um, if two, three, and four are the feelers, five, six, and seven are the head type, the thinkers. That's not to say that other types don't feel or think they do. It's just the kind of emphasis that uh, comes across. So today, what I want to do is uh, I want to do two things. I want to say something a little bit more about personality in general. And then I want to have a little look at um, type two. So stay with me through this. Um, I've mentioned before that, um, uh, that one of my favorite philosophers, thinkers, psychologists, um, is a man called Alan Watts. Um, and uh, Alan Watts has something very interesting to say about personality. And uh, he uses one of these, and um, he explains that uh, personality uh, comes from two Greek words, per sona. And that means that through which comes sound. Sona is sound. And um, he refers to these masks that were worn in the ancient theatres of Greece, um, in ancient Greek comedies and tragedies, um, ancient Greek plays, when the actors, the performers, wore these masks. And so very often, um, still in use in, in plays today, you'll see at the beginning of the play, um, dramatis uh, personae, the, the people of, of this play. And um, so persona is the, the actor would be making the sound of this character through this mask, persona. So he is making, he or she are making the sound of the actor through, through the mask. And this throws out a kind of tantalizing question. What really is personality? 
is it something that is kind of put on? Is it something intrinsic to us? Is it something that's put on almost like a mask? Is it the real us? I want to explore that in more depth in, um, as we go th through this series on the Enneagram. For now, I kind of want to leave it as a, a kind of little tantalizing question. Who are we? And what makes us tick? What truly is personality? So um, what I've also explained in previous sessions as well is that each type comes into the world looking for something, searching for something, something that's missing. We saw last time in when we were looking at type one, the reformer. Type ones were missing perfection. And the, the desire is to reform, to put things right. And the type two, when we come into type two, we're moving into the heart space. And um, <clears throat> type twos, at the start of this kind of heart space trio, come into the world looking for love. And in order to seek out love, they tend to give a lot of love, very giving, very loving, outwardly <clears throat> projecting love outwards to the world. One of the... Um, buzzwords really for the type two is can I help hence the title the helper twos are often drawn to caring professions nursing medical uh, areas um, very sensitive to people to the needs of people also to animals um, a huge sort of care for the the animal world twos generally are very upbeat kind of people, very optimistic, naturally kind and compassionate, very willing to serve and to help. The Enneagram doesn't really have any uh, religious kind of connotations at all. It speaks into all religions and spirituality generally. Um, there's a very interesting phrase that's actually used in the New Testament coming from the, the, the Christian tradition that says to me quite a bit about type twos. It says, um, the son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost or rather those who were lost. A statement about Jesus coming into the world to seek and to save those who were lost. And the, the type two has a kind of feel for um, those who are struggling and a natural affinity with those who are, are struggling and suffering in the world. That would be a good phrase to use for them. So they're looking for love and they give hope. Twos generally give uh, love in the hope of receiving it back, a hope to receive that something of that love back to share the love if you like into the world generous thoughtful upbeat and optimistic it can be very um, sensitive to any kind of suffering of people and animals as i've said and that suffering can sometimes feel overwhelming for the two very moving um to, you know, to to uh, to quite a degree, and the strong impulse of the two is to go out towards the other person, to the person who is suffering, to meet them at their point of need. And one of the things that um, can happen in that process is that the two can forget themselves, so focused on the other that they can tend to forget themselves. We'll see this again when we get to type nine, the, the peacemaker, often with, a again, a view to the other and not really thinking about self. We'll see when we come to the nine that the, the motives, the drives of the two and the nine are very different. The nine is the peacemaker. The two is the helper. 
So um, that's uh, kind of, if you just keep those words in mind, they are helpful. Um, twos can sometimes feel a little bit isolated. Um, uh, they, they love to be with people. And when they're not, the world can feel a little bit lonely. Um, I'm going to share a, a couple of quotes that I think, um, can, if, if you identify a little bit with, with some of this, it's possible you are a, a type two. And I want to share a couple of quotes in a moment that will be helpful, should be helpful to you. Um, because it's very important for type twos to be aware of their own needs. In thinking of the needs of others, it's very easy to forget the, the self. And there's really two, two issues. There's this sort of kind of self-forgetting in the type two, but also um, a sense of needing to be appreciated, wanting to be appreciated. Um, you're, you might be putting a lot of effort into supporting, caring, and showing love to somebody. And you want to feel that that at least is appreciated, if not reciprocated, in some way. Life is often reciprocal, give and take. Um, sometimes you won't get that back. And it's important for the two to kind of realize that, and to realize that maybe this is just what you need to do to, to go on giving. And that can feel quite hard for the two. So I want to share these two quotes. Each time I, I want to share a, a quote from uh, a book that I find massively helpful in thinking about Enneagram types. Um, it's a book called Consolations by a poet called David White. And White says this, and um, he uh, focuses on a, a particular word and explores the meaning behind these words. And the word that I've picked out for the type two is the word alone. And I think it's an important word for type twos. And he says this, the first step in spending time alone is to admit how afraid of it we are. Alone, we live in our bodies as a question rather than a statement. Aloneness asks us to make a friend of silence. To actually seek to be alone is a radical act. To live something in a way that feels like choice again. To find ourselves alone as a looked for achievement, not a state to which we have been condemned. I think that's really important for twos to hear that. Something very positive about self-love. And in the alone space, you can care for yourself. The energy that you're expending, you can expend on yourself. And that's OK. It's OK to do that. And then Robert Holden um, says this. Robert Holden's a very good Enneagram teacher. He says this. The fear that I am not lovable is the basis for every other fear. When you ask yourself, who am I without that fear? You will experience love. When you drop the fear of being unlovable, you will find love. And I can commend those two quotes to you. And beautiful people, type twos, lots to offer the world. Each type is beautiful in its own right. But important to remember that quality of self-love, self-valuing and self-appreciation. Thanks very much for watching today's session. Um, do subscribe to the Sanger House channel and um, 
If you're in the Taunton area, do come and check out the Sanger House. You're sure of a warm welcome and lots of different activities on the health and well-being spectrum. Thank you very much.